Matthew, no apostrophe S. No apostrophe S. I still get that, Matthew. But yeah, Matthews. But shouldn't it be Matthews and then apostrophe at the end S? I don't think so. That's how you do that. Oh, Matthews's. But then it would be Matthews's. Yeah. Effects. Isn't it? But my last name is Matthews. It kind of feels like we've been here before, Rick. I feel like we have. Yeah. yeah. It's never going to be resolved. It's going to be a forever question. So, here um, we have the brand new DD200 from Matthews. <laughs> um, it's a delay. It's pretty awesome. Under the series name Boss, right? Yeah, you know, I just wanted to go for something really original. You know, something no one else had named a pedal before. So. Like, I'm the boss. Yeah, that, that was the inspiration. Awesome. Then, um, different series is the Strymon series that you're doing. Yeah. Very cool. It's very reminiscent of a pedal I have that does a different modulation. What does, the, what does your Strymon do? Uh, it pretty much does everything that no one else does. Just everything. Oh, that, that's, just everything. that's everything. Everything. Clone? Yep. Awesome. Frequency modulated drippy reverb. Hey, with, with a sequencer. Holy hell. Um, and then Dodd, it's probably the name of your dog. Uh, yeah, you know, it was my, uh, it was my dog growing up and I uh, wanted to kind of commemorate that, really, you know, honor him. So why not name a, name a pedal after him? Or we talk about the actual new product from Matthew's Effects, which is, no, um, the Futurist. The Futurist. Say it in like an Arnold Schwarzenegger voice. The Futurist. <laughs> Wait, I want that again. One more time. The Futurist. How do you do a better German accent than I do? <laughs> it's just like, I don't get that. So, um, we have a little, a very, very small, little yeah. golden box of awesomeness. Yes. That would also be a good name. I, 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 it was right up there, and it barely got beat out by the Futurist. Yeah. But yeah, it's an analog BPM generator. Did you just say analog? Analog? I think you just said analog. Oh, my gosh. Well, that'll definitely become a, a GIF, I guess. <laughs> analog BPM generator and MIDI controller. So pretty much it can control anything on your pedal board or any of your gear. Is this Velcro to the table? It currently is, but we do have a handy-dandy loose one that we can show off. It's still a little bit of power. Oh. No, that's not power. That's that is power. That's MIDI. What that is, is that? MIDI. It's got the mini MIDI. Yep. Mini, mini MIDI in say and that, out. Say that 10 times fast. Mini MIDI, 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 Oh, God. <laughs> you go. Mini, MIDI, 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 MIDI. Yeah, I can't even do that. Harry? Harry? No. <laughs> <laughs> Harry is not playing. Okay, that is awesome. Is it mini MIDI in and out? Yes. And then there's a micro USB and a macro MIDI. And we have, uh, it says utility. And then we have control, with it, which is um, expression. Yeah, so with the control jack, you can set it to be expression or you can expand it to seven switches. So you could have seven presets per bank, 30 banks, 210 presets total. So this is the input for this. Also where the nine volt is. This is a utility for when you plug something in there, like a guy comes and like cleans your floors, empties your trash. Exactly. Utility management, right? Yeah, utility management. It's so you can control him, make sure he's on time. Awesome. Um, <laughs> why do these videos turn out this way? I'm thinking it's more. It's probably more me than you, right? I think it's all of us. Yeah. Okay. We all okay. So um, hold this. Yeah. Because I'm trying to. Uh, we can still power from here. Okay. Good then. That might be a little bit easier. But we're still only have so much room. There we go. Okay, there we go. Um, I, I applaud you on the graphics. Thank you. Yeah, I was like, well, if we're going to do a utility pedal, you know, let's not make it boring. Let's do something cool with it. Mm. Uh, there, there might. It looks like there isn't a really a lot of stuff in there because it's an empty, empty, and empty. I mean, it's pretty much like an empty pedal as far as the pedal tells me, okay? Yeah, well, we didn't want to fill it up with stuff before it got to you, so that's up to you to put all the goodness in it. The goodity. And look at how small this pedal is, and you still manage to do four offset switches, or two rows of two offset switches. Yeah, it was really important to me to offset the location, but also in the height. So that way we kind of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, Harry, we... get this shit. Come here. Heightly offset. You getting that? 
clever. What well, the, the other pedals have that too. Yeah. Yeah, so our whole line, I, I really try to think from a user perspective and not just a designing perspective. Like, what's going to be best on stage? Um, and so really giving you the best chance to hit the specific switch that you're trying uh, was really our goal with that. Uh, stunning. So you have tap tempo, but out to analog and MIDI. Yeah, so any of the seven switches uh, can be programmed to be a tap switch, a bank up, or a preset. So you just come in here, choose the switch that you want. Currently it's tap. We're going to set it back to preset. Go out. And now they're all empty. But yeah, you can control analog out. So any pedal that has tap in, you can control it with the utility jack. Um, or you can do MIDI, uh, MIDI clock, control it with the tap. Or you can do preset changes for both of those. You can have just presets where it changes the times. Now, um, I just saw you edit it with the uh, uh, foot switches. Can I edit it? What is USB for? Is there an, an editor on a computer or is it only editable with the foot switches? Yeah, the USB actually does a lot. So you can power it from USB so you don't need a, a different power supply. You can update the firmware through it. And then we're also launching an editor with it, which I'm really excited about. Number one, just having an editor to edit everything really helps. But what I really wanted to try to improve in the industry Uh, was to make MIDI easier for a lot of the users who maybe feel intimidated by MIDI or don't understand it. So it has what we're calling a smart editor wizard. So you have some drop downs and all you have to know is the MIDI channel the device is on. You choose the brand, the model, the action you want to take, let's say preset, and there's a box for a variable. So let's say preset four, generate, and it will create the message that will send you to preset four on that specific device. And that is something I pitched to TC Electronic three years ago. I had a two hour meeting with Toro when he was still at TC and I pitched him an editor for a uh, pedal board switcher. Mm -hmm. I said, the, the switcher we need is not one where I need to know MIDI uh, tables and uh, MIDI functions and then find out Uh, because let's say on this Mobius here, um, you've got 128 banks of two presets, but then I have to know if it's uh, preset 74B. I have to do 74 times two plus one. Yeah. And that's my program change. Why in the world do I need to know this? Why doesn't the device have, I mean, how many MIDI capable pedals are there? It's relatively Uh, you know, there's a, there's an incredible amount that's only ever growing. And, and that's also what's exciting for us is this is really the foundation for everything that's coming next. Right. So everything that will come out from us next will have MIDI and will have USB. So all of them you'll be able to edit from the editor and you'll be able to control with this pedal. So if you have a Mobius, then instead of doing that math, because then you go to the uh, big sky, which has ABC per bank. So it's a different math and it's ridiculous. Why not have a device where either the community puts in that information yep. or you put in the information for most readily available MIDI pedals and then you as the user just goes, okay, boss, DD200, I want to control um, delay time or feedback, whatever. And it's in the software. I mean, it literally takes someone that knows what they're doing, probably two hours to put that all in there. But then the company that took that work over for you looks like heroes. So yeah. you're pretty much superheroes of the pedal world. Yeah, and really there shouldn't, you know, there's so many users who want that functionality, but they just don't get it and they don't want to spend the time to learn and they shouldn't have to learn, right? It's scary. Yeah, and so being able to do that, and it's exactly as you said, we're, we're launching with support for so many brands and then there, the, the rest is going to be community driven also so that any brand can be a part of it. It's not just the, you know, the big companies. Uh, you know, and those companies will be able to, ideally, we'll get buy-in from companies, so they'll just start submitting the stuff into it themselves, and, and then it just becomes the most accessible MIDI controller on the market. I studied sound design at Berkeley. I'm going to have to, you know, rub that in again. And I graduated with summa cum laude, and we did MIDI. A whole, I mean, in depth, I know the, you know, MSB, LSB, and I, I know it down to the individual bits and shit. We had to study that. I don't wanna, I don't wanna deal with it. I understand it. I mean, I studied, you know, keyboards. I mean, I know what MIDI does down to everything, but I don't wanna dive into the freaking table and then find out how to do this in the menu. I wanna go, oh, that's my pedal. That's what I wanna control with 
this foot switch done. And you're telling me that the Futurist by Matthew Zizzo's effects is making that possible? Yes, definitely. And what's really exciting is, is the future. I mean, without getting crazy into it, MIDI 2.0 is going to be coming soon. And then it will be even easier because the devices will actually talk to each other and there'll be even more functionality that we'll be able to put into it to where you will just, you'll barely have to do anything. It'll be so simple. And that's what I'm really excited about is this having USB, it's going to be a living product that will continually edit and update. You know, maybe customers decide like, hey, it'd be really cool if it did this or can we do this? And we can just update that. And that's our first experience with a product having USB. Aren't you scared? Because you're talking about a living product. We just had Arnold on the show earlier um, about it taking over, becoming self-aware, and then just, you know, killing us all with, uh, you know, I don't know, the brown sound or something. I mean, isn't that a possibility? It's a risk we have to take. Well, you've heard it here. Look, if this all goes south and, and we're living like in The Walking Dead in five years because the, the machines took over, that's the guy that made it happen. We, I think we all know that Amazon is Skynet at this point. Okay. Can you buy this on Amazon then? Because they might possibly, you know, make this self-aware. Yeah, it, it probably will be available on that because it will take over Amazon. Scary. So look, if you want to be responsible for the end of the world, get a futurist, feed it more information, make it learn, make it self-aware. If you value your life, you might not want to get one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's my sales pitch right here. Perfect. And we'll, we'll, we'll put that on the ads. If you want us to live, don't buy a futurist. That's pretty much it. Avi's going to freaking kill me. And again, he's not going to watch this crap. I mean, come on. No, it's reverse psychology. Because then we're telling them not to buy it. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I have to buy it. Oh yeah, don't buy it. Rick, thank you. Yes. Br brilliant product. I hope, I hope that uh, whoever is in charge, you know, gets one over to me because I, I will kind of understand what it does. Yeah. But I want to show that software and, uh, you know, switch a synergy freaking amp with other stuff. Peter is looking at me very scarily. Show Peter. The, the Stapfer man from the Dietzel. Or as I say in France, Le Dietzel. That's what they say. They probably say Le Dietzel. You learn something new every day. Yeah. I teach you French. Yeah. We? Oui? Only that. I only know how to say diesel in French. Le diesel. <laughs> okay. Le diesel? Avec le camembert, le voiture, l'autoroute, tout, tout. Oh, très bien, bleu. And um, I don't know, some animals at the end, possibly. Yeah, perfect. Till the sun goes out. Empty bottles on the dance floor Ideas have died I wish that I could understand more So I won't stop trying Till the sun goes up above 